Hello and welcome back to JP's Retro World. I am your man, JP. On my last video, I talked about WrestleMania 40. And this kind of ties along with that because before I watched WrestleMania 40, uh, night one, I tuned in to Peacock and I watched a documentary uh, about Bray Wyatt. They just did a new, brand new documentary about Bray Wyatt which was basically showed a lot of his brother, Taylor, who's known in WWE world as Bo Dallas. And so they talked about Bray's story, and they talked about, you know, his journey into the WWE. They started from NXT, and then as Husky Harris, but then they didn't, he didn't really like that. Nobody really liked that gimmick, so he came, with, came up with this idea for a wrestler, which is which was kind of derived from the old like mid nineties wrestler Waylon Mercy, and if you don't remember that wrestler, I'd you know Google it or look look it up because uh, you could totally tell how he kind of got the look from Waylon Mercy, and it was a really good character. Uh, it didn't last long because Dan Spivey, the man who did it originally, was he was already old and kind of beat up, so he kind of retired after that, but. Anyway, Bray Wyatt got this idea from this character. But over time, it just evolved into this, like, kind of creepy, like, I don't know, Louisiana swamp creepy guy. And, you know, he had these two big guys that were with him, uh, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. You know, those guys, one of them wore, like, this sheep's mask when he came to the ring. Two big, giant, gigantic guys. And then, so then, after a while, you know, Bray left for a while. Then he came back and kind of reinvented himself. And he called himself Bray Wyatt. But then he, his alter ego was The Fiend. Like this evil, like demonic looking figure. Where he had this like mask. Where it was like just totally evil. Evil looking. And, but it was supposed to be evil. He was supposed to be a heel. And he would come back and he would torment all of his opponents. And, you know, he would, you know, it was... It was kind of fun stuff, and especially if you like my like classic like horror movies, where you know there's like a monster, because he was portraying himself as kind of this like evil monster that would torment and haunt his opponents and play mind games. It was it was kind of like sort of like a new Undertaker, only he was like the Undertaker with the dial turned up. Uh, so then you know he left the company, but then he came back, and I think the WWE had big plans for him, I mean, they were gonna do some pretty cool stuff with him, uh, but then he got sick, he, got, he came down with COVID, and then that ultimately led to his passing, you know, he passed away at the age of 38, which is very sad, very sad, yeah, it's very, it's way too young, very too young, and he left behind, you know, legions of fans, he left behind, uh, fiance and kids, you know, he, but, the, you know, the fans loved him, the fans loved what he did, they loved his contribution to the wrestling business, and in a world where I, I really didn't care for a lot of the modern stuff, I actually really enjoyed Bray's stuff, Bray Wyatt's stuff was actually just, you know, it was really cool, and, and that's the kind of wrestling character that I grew up watching when I was a kid, you know, you know, not specifically that, but that type of kid. Because I was always a WWF guy. You know, I liked NWA and I liked WCW, but that was more like sporty, realistic, realism type stuff. But I was kind of into the cartoony, superhero, larger-than-life characters of the WWF. And Bray Wyatt, you know, that character, it was just... It was amazing. It was an amazing character. And from what I understand... From watching the documentary, he was an amazing guy. He was always good to his fans. Loved his family. And his dad was IRS, a.k.a. Mike Rotundo. Formerly known as IRS. And, but he just got inducted into the Hall of Fame with his 80s tag team partner, Barry Windham, as the U.S. Express. So congratulations to Mike Rotundo. And, uh, yeah, so if you haven't seen the Brave Wyatt documentary... I recommend it, even if you're not really into modern wrestling. 
it's still a really good story. It's still a really touching story, you know, and I recommend it. And I was taken back by it, and I was in, interested in it from beginning to end. WWE did a really, really good job with it. And uh, uh, Taylor um, Rotunda, his, Ray's brother, uh, was through the whole thing, kind of there to kind of tell his story. He went to the mask shop where Bray White had all of his masks made by a friend of theirs. And, you know, they just started talking and reminiscing about Bray, and that's kind of when they went into the story and the documentary. So, so Bray Wyatt's documentary, I give it a thumbs up. And I'm sad that he passed away so young. And uh, Bray Wyatt, I'm going to miss you. Anyway, that is going to do it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you enjoyed my take on this documentary. So with that, please, if you like the video, please go ahead and click that like button. Click the subscribe button. I think there's a bell where you click it. I'll let you know when I upload new videos. We're just having fun over here. I do a lot of retro content. I do non-wrestling stuff. And then I do wrestling stuff. And it's just, it's a wacky world over here. JP's retro world. But anyway, I will see you next time.